In this video, we'll explore how color space can affect your images, why Photoshop may show warnings like these, and a simple fix to avoid serious trouble. Let's consider the example of an image which I've already edited in the ProPhoto RGB space. And let's just say we're gonna print it, but the printer prefers Adobe RGB. So you might go up to Edit, Convert to Profile, and we can change from ProPhoto over to Adobe RGB. And the hope would be that when we do this, the image should be relatively unchanged so we can print the same image that we've been editing on screen. But when I click OK, there's a pretty good change here from before to after. Notice the sky is more saturated in the Pro Photo version and a little more dull afterwards. And you might think, OK, maybe there's a gamut problem because Pro Photo has more color than Adobe RGB. And I'll give you maybe that's part of the issue. Probably not, though. Down below, though, the water Notice that it's getting kind of washed out and losing contrast. I mean, there's nothing down here that's a vibrant color. So this change is definitely not a gamut problem. There's something else going on here. So we need to go and understand why, and then we'll come back for the fix in a moment. And I do want to note for the purposes of this video, I'm showing the color space of the document here in the bottom of the Photoshop info panel, as well as the bottom of Lumenzia. And you may notice that they do not agree currently. And as I go from before and after, Lumenzia is updating. It's always showing the correct value, but Photoshop has a bug. It's not refreshing this panel. And so it may show the incorrect value. So pay attention to what's in Lumenzia. That's going to be the correct value. And if you're using the Photoshop panel here, first of all, you can show this by going to the top right, flyout, panel options, and turn on document profile. That's what's going to show this. But if you're using the Photoshop approach and you want to make sure it's accurate, just go switch documents and that'll force a refresh. And now you see the correct pro photo value, but notice now as I make any change, it's not updating. So this can be wrong and it's better to use the Lumenzia approach. If you have Lumenzia, just go to the top right flyout, go to tooltips and info and turn on document and PS info, and then just drag the bottom of the panel down so you can see this text here. So this is what you want to watch for the sake of this video. So let's go understand what's going on here and we'll come back in a moment and fix this. To understand the issue, I've created this technical document where there's some opacity stuff going on on the left, there's some blend mode stuff going on here, and some adjustment layer changes over here. And they all have slightly different impacts on the image. I'll explain them in a moment, but let's just see what happens when we convert color. We're starting out in sRGB, and I'm gonna go up to Edit, Convert to Profile, and let's go choose to go to Pro Photo. Now we're going from a small color space to a big one. So you would think nothing would change here. These are all colors that ProPhoto can handle. These are certainly colors it can handle. You would think nothing would change, but when you say, okay, there's a lot of changes going on here. I mean, look at this gray swatch in the before state. It's one consistent shade of gray. And then after part of it stayed the same, but most of it changed to a much lighter color. Or let's take a look at up above here, these brush strokes in the before state where the green and the red meet, it's pretty dark. And then after it's a bright yellow, same thing with the, the red and the blue. It's going from a dark mix to a bright mix. And then look at the size of the brush stroke. It's almost like we use a small brush and then the after state, it looks like a bigger brush. The, these lines got fatter I and mean, that's pretty interesting. And then in the blend modes, notice these values all change here. These are different blend modes from the same starting colors, but they're having different results. And then in the adjustment layer results here, this is changing obviously as well. So there's a lot of things going on here. Let's break it down one part at a time. Let's take a look at the opacity stuff here in this first block. So in the opacity block, I just put in a white stripe for reference. You notice the white is not changing here. The black's not changing. There's no impact because white is white and black is black and the gamma is not affecting things. But we're getting a different result for the midtones. That's where you'll see a lot of these changes because the gamma is the problem here, not the gamut, because ProPhoto is a gamma 1.8 and sRGB is pretty close to a gamma 2.2. So it's the EOTF or the transfer function that's causing midtone values to change. And if we pay attention to the info panel here in Photoshop, the RGB values are not really useful to humans because they're just references within a color space. So sRGB and ProPhoto have different numbers for the same color but lab is color space independent. So you should see the same values regardless of the color space. And so if we take a look at the values here, if I hover here over my gray, notice that the RGB values are changing, but the lab values are not. So what's happening here is in sRGB, my 64 value is being converted by Photoshop when I go over to ProPhoto 
to a 49. So Photoshop is handling the pixel correctly, converting from a 64 to a 49, because it knows that will give us the same lab value. So it's adjusting the input RGB values to achieve the exact same color. Here though, we're getting something else. Notice that before and after, the RGB values did not adapt. They're the same values, but the lab value, the L value, is changing. So what's going on here? I mean, this is a, this is a regular pixel. If we look at my layer here, I just have a simple mask, 100% opacity, and I have a solid gray layer, which right now is 49. Let's go look at the input. So here's my input, which was a 64. So I told it I want 64, which coincidentally is 25% of the maximum 255 white. So I've got a solid color here. And because it's a real pixel, Photoshop can adjust it. So in the after state, if I go and look at the color here, it adapts to the 49. Photoshop is fixing the pixel. It's just a rendered pixel and it can convert it correctly as long as it's inside the gamut and all the values here are. But if we look at the next three swatches, these are all doing the same thing. The first one here, I just have a solid mask on a solid white 255, but the layer opacity is 25%. That's what this one is here. And so I've got white at 25% opacity. Mathematically, I'm taking 25% of that and then I'm mixing it with the black from the background. And that's what's giving me this RGB value of 64. And it doesn't matter which color space I'm in. If I'm in sRGB, I'm doing 25% of the 255. And if I'm in Profoto, I'm doing 25% of the 255. So the RGB value is what it's creating here. It's not fixing the math. It's doing the same math, but the numbers mean something different. My 64 is this value in sRGB but now it's this value. What I really wanted was new math. I wanted to get over to this 49 if I wasn't gonna change it. So that Photoshop cannot fix its math. It can only fix a solid pixel. Now that was a 25% opacity. The next one here is white where the pixels themselves are partially opaque. So this is just 25% opacity. So this is technically the same thing as the one above. And same thing here, it's white with a mask, which is a 25% mask. And so again, all three of these are the same thing. I'm taking 25% of 255 and blending it with zero, giving me a 64. And no matter what color space I'm in, I'm always getting 64. So the numbers are being interpreted to mean something else in the after state. So that's the problem here. Same thing with the blending of these colors. Now, in this case, these colors are up here and it is adapting these values. I mean, if I look in the before space, I've got a 255 green in the after, the green is a different value, but it's, it visually is the same thing. So it did correct the pixel. The problem is the way that the mask or the opacity is interpreted is different. Because again, this is the same math problem here. It's more obvious when we work with a numeric opacity, but a mask is just opacity at the pixel level. So the problem here is that it did fix the color of the solid, but it couldn't fix the mask math over here. The math is not being corrected, and that's why my opacity is kind of a disaster here. And that's a real problem with these shifts. In the case of this blend mode, let's take a look at that. Here, I have a bunch of different swatches. They all have the same color above a solid gray. So it's just get this one solid gray and then a bunch of squares above it. And each one has a different blend mode. I have a multiply blend mode and a screen blend mode. They're all doing the same thing. Here, it's the same thing. When I go from before to after, the gray and the color, they're being corrected, but the values here, right? These numbers are being fed into the soft light blend mode or the screen blend mode or whatever. It's doing that math, it's spitting out a number. And so you can see before and after here, it's giving me, you know, these, these numbers are, are changing, um, but the math is also problematic. So it's, it's a little more compounded here because we are correcting one of it and not the other, but it's the same problem that it's not correcting the values here. The, the math is not being adapted for the color space. Same thing for the adjustments here. I've got this black to white gradient. And as I look before and after, it is fixing the gradient, 
but my curve is going to be applied to different numbers on that gradient. And same thing with the photo filter. So when I look at this, I'm getting this different result. So in all of these cases, the issue is that Photoshop is able to fix a change in a fully rendered pixel, but it is not able to adapt its math. An opacity is math, and a blend mode is math, and adjustment layers are math. And none of those can be corrected to your color space. It's just too complicated. So we need to have something which is a fully rendered pixel in order to safely convert. So we could, for example, let's go back to our before state here and let's show the way we do this. I'm gonna right click, let's flatten our image. Now there's no math, everything's fully rendered. All these pixel values can be converted. So now we go up to edit, convert to profile, choose pro photo, no change before, after, no change. So the issue here is not gamut, it's the fact that we changed the numeric values because the gamma changed and the limits changed, but the math was not adaptive. Now let's go back here a second to our layered version. Now that was one approach was flattening the image. You may or may not have heard of kind of an interesting sophisticated option. If you go up to edit, color settings, some of you I know are aware of this option to blend RGB colors using gamma. This will take out the effect of the gamma 1.8 versus 2.2 .2 that we're seeing here. When you click this, it's gonna let us use a consistent gamma. So let's put in um, 2.2 .2 because it's really close to the value of sRGB. You can see it's not exactly the same as gamma 2.2, it's pretty close because um, sRGB does not use a gamma, it's an almost this gamma. So you can see that we're kind of in the ballpark here from before to after, just a small shift. Okay, so you might think, okay, maybe that's a fix. I can just use that setting. Well, what happens when we convert color space now? Let's go up to edit, convert to profile. We'll again choose pro photo, say okay. Wait a sec, everything's just changing. I mean, look at the outline here. We have this weird, hazy thing going on here. This is changing. So what's happening is the blending is being corrected by that setting but the other math functions are not. So you know, if you are aware of that setting, I would not use it under this edit color settings. This is fixing one problem, but not all the problems. And this is at the Photoshop level. So if you don't have every single image edited for this setting, you're gonna have mixed results. It really should be a setting that's baked into the document and saved with the image, but it's not. So your images, you're gonna have real problems if you use this and you're certainly not gonna be able to send them to other people in layered form, it's gonna break them. So don't use this setting. With that though, let's come back and take a look at the true fix. If we go back to our original image here, we have all these layers. I could, like we did before, right click and flatten the image, which might be the, the right approach. If I'm gonna print, I probably need to resize. So I just create a new copy of this, flatten it and convert it. That would be fine. But sometimes you don't wanna do that. Sometimes you wanna keep working non-destructively and so this is not the right choice. Instead, what we can do is let's select all the layers. So I'll select my bottom layer, go up, shift click to select all the layers. Now I can right click, convert to a smart object. And when I do this, I'm basically making rendered pixels. I mean, I can go back and change these pixels by editing the smart object. If I double click this, we have all our layers, we can keep making changes. But on the outside, this is functionally just rendered pixels, no ongoing math on, at this point. So now we can go up to edit, convert to profile and change from pro photo over to Adobe RGB and say, okay. And when this runs, we'll see exactly what happens. And you can see from before to after, they are nearly identical. If you have a wide gamut monitor, you'll notice in this little sliver right here, there's a little bit of a change in the sky. This is where the gamut of pro photo does not fit in Adobe RGB. It's a really small problem, doesn't break my image, everything else looks great. So there's a little bit of a gamut issue, but on the whole, the problem was really much more about the open-ended math I had with all those layers, and we wanna create a single rendered pixel layer and convert that. Now to learn more about color in Photoshop, click to this next video.